First, thank you for uh, coming somewhat short notice. I remember last week we said that was our last press conference of the uh, year. However, this hopefully will be the last press conference of the year. Uh, so as I'm sure everyone is aware, uh, we have winter weather coming, not just today, but especially on Wednesday and into Thursday. So temperatures are expected to drop significantly and wind chills could get dangerously below zero. Uh, this being Kansas, we could get anywhere between uh, just a dusting of snow to up to four inches. Uh, but our snow plows and snow crews are ready for anything. We're fully stocked on salt and sand and fully staffed and ready to respond to whatever the weather might throw at us. As a reminder uh, from our annual snow plow briefing, our fleet consists of eight brine trucks uh, for pretreatment, over 60 trucks with plows uh, and salt and sand spreaders, uh, three dispatch locations, including one here. So we have roughly 17,500 tons of just straight salt available uh, in reserves, and that is enough to make 35,000 tons of salt and sand mix as needed. When winter weather does hit the streets, our streets are treated by priority. So I want this, this is fairly important because we get a lot of calls about uh, uh, how we treat the streets and why certain streets aren't treated uh, uh, before other streets. We have over 5,000 uh, lane miles and limited resources, so it's impossible to effectively treat every street in our city. So we will focus the first 1,500 lane miles of emergency routes uh, and major arterials, paying special attention to major traffic routes serving hospitals, emergency facilities, and public schools. So that first 1,500 miles is uh, based on uh, those targets. Then we focus on the remaining secondary uh, main, secondary arterials and residential school access streets, which account for an additional 300 lane miles. So uh, as this starts progressing, uh, we will, uh, of course, uh, uh, prioritize uh, routes to hospitals, emergency facilities, uh, public schools, and then around those public schools. Just a reminder, the city of Wichita does not ma maintain the federal and state roadways uh, like K-96. I-135 and I-235 and Kellogg. So we are not the ones who will be plowing those roads. On average, we use about 1,000 tons of salt sand mix per event, but that of course depends on a type and amount of precipitation, how cold the temperatures are, and how long the event lasts. Also with rain, uh, if rain precedes the snow, it's often difficult to pre-treat our streets uh, as as the rain washes away the pre-treat. Uh, so uh, if there is rain uh, before uh, snow, please keep that in mind. Those streets likely won't be pre-treated, or if they were, the water likely wash off that pre-treat. Uh, so you can also track plows on wichita.gov slash snow removal. And I want to thank our first responders, both public safety, public works, and more for all they do to keep us safe every day, but most especially uh, those who are here serving our community uh, in this dangerous winter weather. So we have some with us, so thank you. Uh, we know a lot of folks wind up getting bundled down and are able to stay home. Our police, our fire, our first responders, our, our street crews, they are still uh, out there working for folks uh, to make sure that we can uh, get through this uh, with as less casualties and less uh, uh, damage uh, to personal property and other items as possible. Even though our responders do a phenomenal job of keeping the roads clear uh, and passable as soon as they can, uh, if you don't have to be out on Thursday, then we ask for folks to please stay off the roads. Uh, also, we're gonna talk a little bit about our population of Wichita's who are uh, unhoused. Uh, our homeless outreach team uh, will also be working to connect unhoused residents to services and get them into winter shelters. Uh, we're also handing out these pamphlets that we introduced about a week ago, maybe a couple weeks ago actually, uh, with service information out to area businesses and organizations to help connect folks to those services. So, uh, and these are uh, pocket size, there's uh, information on shelters, day shelters, public facilities, including where to get a, um, uh, access to, to a phone, uh, and of course a map. Uh, so we will have one 24-hour shelter, which is humankind, and then we have Open Door Ministries and Union Rescue Mission who are also shelters. And we are asking folks uh, who are experiencing homelessness or folks who are reaching out to those folks uh, to encourage them to go to a shelter. It's just going to be too cold to try to uh, really manage this uh, outside in the elements. 
So a full list of shelters, housing, and meal services is available on the homeless resource page at wichita.gov slash homeless. If residents notice an individual in need of homeless services, uh, they are encouraged to reach out to our homeless outreach team uh, at 316-854-3013. Again, the goal is to get people into shelters uh, and not try to encourage people to not go into shelters. Uh, so we do have folks who I think have the best intention uh, and even people are experienced who might go out and pass out hats or pass out gloves uh, to folks who are unhoused. Uh, it's going to be so cold that we just, again, want to encourage people to actually get to the shelters. The uh, city of Wichita has um, contributed quite a, a bit of resources over to Humankind for a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week shelter uh, over at Humankind. So we want to make sure that people know that's, that's available uh, and to know that that's the best place to be as the weather starts to turn. So we also uh, want to thank our friends over at the United Way and encourage people to call the United Way at 211 uh, for a full list of shelters, housing, and meal services uh, by visiting 211kansas.org or again just calling 211. If you have to get out, uh, some advice, uh, please be sure to drive slowly and safely. Have an emergency kit in your car just in case. Plan extra time to reach your destination. Keep your vehicle in proper working order. Slow down in slick conditions. Allow for extra stopping distance. Uh, clear windows and windshields of ice, snow, and other uh, obstructions. Uh, and stay away from safety equipment on the roads. Again, we are hoping that folks, uh, once the roads get really bad, if you can stay home, to stay home. If you have to go out, please uh, give yourself an abundance of time to get to your destination. Uh, a lot of the uh, folks who, who wind up on the side of the road uh, are the ones who are going too fast. Uh, and it's because people might have underestimated uh, the severity of the weather, and that's why we're having, ha having these uh, press conferences before the weather really hits us. Uh, and be sure to be familiar with the signs of hypothermia, uh, which can happen within minutes. Uh, symptoms include shivering, uh, uh, sleepiness, stiff muscles, and confusion. And frostbite uh, symptoms include numbness, uh, prickling of the skin, skin that looks blue, white, or gray. Our public works crew uh, crews do, do safety briefings before shifts to ensure that they stay safe, and we want the community to stay safe as well. Also, uh, just a reminder, though it's a little bit off script, but uh, Councilmember Johnson will usually talk about this. Uh, make sure you bring your pets in uh, as uh, dogs. It uh, might be uh, outdoor dogs. Um, when it gets as, as cold as it is, they really don't do well uh, out outdoors. If you do have them outdoors, of course, please uh, make sure that they have shelter uh, that can keep them warm during that time. Finally, just a reminder uh, to be sure uh, to do what you can to prevent pipes from bursting. Uh, keep cabinets, doors, cabinet doors open to let warmer room temperatures uh, flow in. Keep faucets dripping. Uh, moving water is harder to, to freeze and the extra cost of water is often lower than a cost to repair broken pipes. Uh, so please be mindful of your pipes in your house or in your uh, neighbor's house who, who might need some help as well. Uh, if your pipes do freeze, shut off your main water valves and thaw the pipes with warm air. Uh, with that, uh, we'll take questions, but before we do, I do want to recognize Julie from the county uh, who's with us. I was looking at Jose. That's not Julie. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> so, Julie, if you uh, have a few words for us. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for giving me an opportunity. Uh, Julie Stimson, Cedric County Emergency Management Director. I just want folks to know that we will be monitoring um, the impacts of this winter storm. Um, Mayor Whipple had a lot of good tips that we're going to, of course, uh, encourage to follow. Uh, but just know that we are in constant communication with the National Weather Service. We'll be monitoring the impacts of this storm. Uh, primarily, it looks to be more of a cold weather event versus a snow event. Um, with that, we may anticipate some sort of utility failure, power utility failures, and that's what we'll be monitoring for. We are already working with our partners that if we need to have any kind of mass sheltering due to widespread power outages, we are prepared to do that. Um, so just be assured that we are monitoring and we are prepared for any kind of uh, disruption that this storm is going to bring us. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for all you do. Uh, and also, just for folks who are on social media, please follow the official Wichita, City of Wichita uh, Facebook page and our Twitter page. Uh, we will be, uh, our staff will be having updates periodically or retweeting uh, 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 
valuable information as well as we get through these next few days. But with that, we're open up to questions. And if you have questions uh, for me, I I'll take them, but also uh, we have folks here with our, our uh, police department, our fire department, and also with the county. Uh, so if you have questions for them, we'll be happy to pivot. This might be a little bit of a question for Hunter Day, but just talk a little bit, the, the kind of increased fire danger that comes around when we have these extreme cold temperatures, and having the risk for carbon monoxide and things like that, people trying to keep their homes in different ways, just some of those tips, because a lot of people are gonna be trying to do everything they can to stay warm over the next you know, 36, 48 hours. We'll be That's a Jose question, yes. Um, yeah, so, the, being able to make sure that everyone from poisonous gases in their homes is that right now with the consideration of the type of temperatures that we're going to be getting, um, we want to make sure that, you know, we don't utilize our stoves for opening up the ovens to try to op uh, warm up our, our homes. Um, that produces carbon monoxide and there's that build up there. So we just want to make sure that if you do have a carbon monoxide detector, make sure that it's operating correctly right now. Go ahead and test it, change your batteries and make sure that they're located on every level of the house. But also, you know, make sure that you're looking at your furnace, you change your filter out, and also that the exhaust um, flu where the uh, connected to your fireplace but also in your furnace that ice doesn't get built up or anything like that that's going to clog and not being able to um, um, exa the exhaust fumes will not be able to get out of the house so make sure that that, that importance of that um, carbon monoxide detector is very critical for in this type of uh, weather but also you know space heaters space heaters are going to be utilized they're going to be around the house in a couple areas make sure that you have a safety zone around there make sure that there, there a possibility of a blanket or pillow doesn't get in contact with it and make sure that the newer versions of um, space heaters they have a tip over protection that if they get to a certain specific angle they'll automatically shut off so that if a pet or a child or even something gets on there that knocks it over that they'll still be able to be shut off um, for a safety standpoint. And then do you have any concerns I know this was an issue just yesterday with some more of the houses catching fire and all that is there any other concern with those kind of going into these extreme weathers because they can offer respite for you know, the homeless community, but also is, as we've seen the last couple of days, very flammable and very dangerous. Yeah, so you know, from vacant or abandoned structures, you know, at all times we always assume that somebody's in there, especially with their smoke showing that fire started somehow or another. So um, we're always going to consider that life is at risk. So we're going to do our, um, we're going to be committed to search and rescue at all times and be able to extinguish the fire and search and make sure that it's all clear. So, you know, not just those types of fires of you vacant and abandoned, but even just residential homes that are being occupied right now because of the extreme weather. So, you know, as we get this batch to fire calls or crews would do their diligence and be able to um, size up the situation to verify if it's a board up if it's a vacant and all that communication will be uh, monitored over the radio so that responding crews would know what we're facing at that time. And if you can touch on extension core take and a lot of times people try to flex space heaters into those and also if people have power failure generator safety I know that's always a big concern mm -hmm. it seems like every year around the nation there's you know some people who die from carbon monoxide poisoning using a generator in unventilated areas. Yeah, so thank you very much for um, bringing that up. Um, extension cords, you know, we have, uh, n depending on the age of your house, you might not have enough outlets out, uh, throughout your house. So um, when dealing with space heaters, you have to plug them in directly into an outlet. They require too much electricity and too much amperage to be able to use through an extension cord. So always plug them directly into an outlet. And if you do lose power, you know, we do have emergency management that they already have a plan in place to be able to utilize um, if it's a long term situation. But if you have portable generators, make sure that those portable generators, the exhaust is on the outside. Do not place them in your garage. Do not place them near a doorway. They have to be on the outside and you'll be able to utilize um, a, an extension cord that is rated for that type of power that you're whatever you're plugging in. So exhaust from power generators. Um, make sure that you just keep them on the outside area so that uh, those fumes and the carbon monoxide doesn't build up in your home. And I guess uh, I see Officer TJ Macy there. I wonder, can we go over ERP and kind of what people need to keep in mind with that? Yes, so the uh, emergency accident reporting plan or ERP, uh, if it goes into effect, uh, will allow motorists who are involved in accidents. Uh, where there's no DUI involvement, uh, no injuries, uh, the cars are movable, 
uh, and there's no hit and run element, uh, they don't need to call 911 at that point in time to have officers respond. Uh, they can fill out a report online, uh, wichitapolice.com, within 24 hours of that incident, as long as they exchange information with each other, uh, driver's license information, um, insurance, and, uh, and that information. Okay. All right, further questions? Uh, as public works talked about, I know when you're dealing with tree roads and stuff like that, I know one of the issues talked about was with, with moisture and stuff like that. We're also going to be dealing with extreme, extreme cold, especially with those wind chills. Does that you know, play a factor in the effectiveness of, of some of the road treatments and stuff like that? Or uh, that and you know, the wind and some of the other elements that we're dealing with since that is less of a moisture event? So I think we have someone from public works that could probably break this down a lot better than I could. Is that? So our public works people are really on top of uh, not, we call it salt sand mixture. They will tell you the exact type of mixture we use for the exact type of ice. So glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Aaron Henning with Public Works and Utilities. Yeah, when the temperatures do get this cold, we do start augmenting our mix with calcium chloride, which has a much lower freeze point. So we, we are doing that. Um, the cold temperatures still make all of it less effective uh, and it is going to be cold for a while so i think thursday's high is maybe five or four somewhere around there uh, friday still remains really cold so it could be a while before we see uh, real good melting action we'll just have to see how it plays out did that answer your question yes i guess uh, they're saying now it's not going to be much of a snow event it's still going to be cold but is that kind of a good thing that it's not gonna, we're not going to see a lot of snow. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I think right now they're showing about 1.3 inches for Wichita. So for us, I mean, it's still going to be a snow event, but hopefully nothing too major. Yeah, it'll, it'll make everything easier for sure. Oh, I want to take yours. That's very good. Yeah, we're, it'd be nice if it's not a snow event, but you never know with, with Kansas, so. You think I can't handle your question, Jackson? <laughs> just kidding. Come on, Julie. I mean, no, she's. He, I mean, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's for content. Um, you mentioned you know you guys do have plans in case there is some sort of widespread spread blackout with this. I would just say, what should people know if there is a blackout? You know, how do they call? How do they find out this information? What is the best way to respond to the situation if some of the power goes out? Well, first, we, we want them to be prepared to handle any kind of power outage. Uh, we went to generators, um, you know, dressing in layers and doing everything they can to, to self-sustain. Um, information we pushed out through local media partners, social media. Um, if it's something that's going to be an emergent response, we, you know, we could send mass notifications. It depends on the situation. Um, but we are looking again, we come in as a county as when it's a widespread power outage. So, if, you know, if we have a pocket of a few homes, we're not going to necessarily be the first responders to something like that. But we are prepared for any kind of widespread that, especially if it's going to be prolonged, if we're talking more than 24 hours of power outages, we'll work with our partners to set up shelters. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Also, uh, in event that there is a power outage, uh, we, we ask folks to reach out to Evergy. Uh, they usually keep things updated, uh, but sometimes they'll reach out to the city or reach out to me personally, and the city, we don't uh, do uh, electric as far as utility. Uh, that's private, that's with um, Evergy. So uh, usually they're pretty good at, uh, when you call, they'll, they'll pinpoint your location, they're pretty good at giving an estimate when uh, power is supposed to be back on. So we've had some problems, I think last year, uh, in, with, with folks losing power. So, so further questions? Again, just want to uh, uh, thank the media for being here, helping us get the word out. This is going to be a, a tough couple of days. Uh, we've been through this before, though. Uh, just uh, takeaways, uh, of course, uh, for up the latest up-to-date information, follow the official City of Wichita social media accounts. That is different than the elected account. So if you're following me, I might retweet what our comms team puts on. I might not. Make sure you follow their, uh, their social media page. That's different. Also, make sure you follow uh, our police uh, social media and also our fire. Fire does uh, Wichita firefighters, um, and d d there's a couple pages um, that are official, and they do a really good job putting out information about space heaters uh, and different safety tips. 
Uh, so uh, please make sure uh, you take advantage of uh, the information that's already out there. Further questions? All right, Megan, did you want to do an announcement about the naming of the salt trucks yet? No? Okay. All right, no further questions. Thank you all for being here. Um, if I don't get an opportunity to say this uh, in the next few days, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas to all who celebrate. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing everyone um, after uh, the Christmas break. Thank you.